JFT, just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFT's Weekly Market Outlook webinar for the week April the 19th until April the 23rd. I am Harald Lambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFT, and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the financial agenda for the week ahead. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer first. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest, and then we will uh, jump into our analysis. Okay, following last week's RBNZ monetary policy decision, this week the central bank torch will be passed to the Bank of Canada and the ECB, with market participants eager to find out whether these banks uh, are indeed considering scaling back their quantitative easing purchases, with the former possible to proceed with a reduction as early as uh, at this gathering. We also get uh, a bunch of UK data including inflation, retail sales and PMIs, as well as uh, New Zealand's uh, CPI for the first quarter. We all, uh, besides the UK PMIs, we also get uh, PMIs from uh, the Eurozone and the US as well. Now let's take things from the beginning. Today is a relatively quiet day with the only releases worth mentioning being Japan's trade balance for March, which is already out, and Canada's housing starts for the same month, due to be released later in the day. Both Japan's exports and imports came in better than expected, with the nation's trade surplus rising to 663.7 billion yen from uh, 215.9 uh, billion yen. Canada's housing starts are anticipated to have uh, risen somewhat. Now, on Tuesday, during the Asian morning, the RBA releases the minutes from its latest monetary policy decision when it kept its uh, policy unchanged, repeating that uh, the economic recovery in Australia is well underway and that it is stronger than uh, had been expected. Therefore, we will scan the minutes for clues as to whether this has diminished even further the chances for additional easing in the foreseeable future and whether some members have already started uh, thinking about normalization. Later in the day, during the early EU session, the UK employment report for February is coming out. The unemployment rate is expected to have ticked up to 5.1% from 5%, while the net change in employment is forecast to show that the economy has lost 167,000 jobs in the three months to February, more than the prior 147,000. With regards to jobs, uh, with regards, excuse me, to wage growth, uh, both including and excluding uh, uh, bonuses uh, earnings rates, are uh, forecast to have held steady at uh, 4.8 and 4.2 percent year over year, respectively. Now on Wednesday. The main event on the economic agenda may be the Bank of Canada interest rate decision. The bank kept its monetary policy settings unchanged uh, last time and noted that the economic recovery continues to require extraordinary monetary policy support until the economic slug is absorbed uh, so that the 2% inflation goal is sustainably achieved. According to the bank's uh, January projections, this is not expected to happen, uh, to happen until into 2023. The Canadian dollar slid somewhat at the time of the release, but was quick to recover those uh, losses as officials reiterated that they continue to gain confidence in the strength of the recovery uh, as they continue to gain strength in the pace of the recovery, the pace of uh, in the strength of the recovery, the pace of net purchases of government of Canada and bonds will be adjusted as required, something that may have kept the door for a quantitative easing tapering open. 
Since then, GDP data showed that the Canadian economy expanded by more than anticipated in January, while the employment data revealed a notable drop in the unemployment rate in the last couple, in the last couple of months and a very strong employment gains. On top of that, ahead of the meeting, Canada's inflation data is expected to show that the headline CPI rate jumped to 2.3% year over year from 1.1%, uh, although this will be seen uh, by many as temporary. Now, with all that in mind, it would be interesting to see whether and uh, how policymakers will adjust their policy. Although interest rates um, Although interest rates are largely expected to stay untouched, we would like to see whether they will eventually decide to taper their quantitative easing purchases. After all, the bank currently owns already nearly 40% of all government bonds, and Governor Maclem has clearly said that if this number surpasses 50%, market functioning could uh, be disordered. As uh, for the Canadian dollar, scaling back bond purchases could be positive, combined with uh, potentially further improvement in the broader market sentiment and further gains in oil prices. Monetary policy is likely to be an extra, boot, uh, an extra boost on uh, the loon is way higher. However, in order to be on the safer side, we would like to exploit any further cut gains against the safe havens like the yen, which we expect to stay under selling interest uh, due to an increased uh, risk appetite. As uh, for Wednesday's data, during the Asian session, we get New Zealand's uh, CPIs for the first quarter. The, the quarter over quarter rate is forecast to have risen to 0.7% from 0.5%, but this is likely to keep the year over year rate unchanged at 1.4%. At last week's gathering, the RBNZ kept its policy settings untouched, staying prepared to lower the official cash rate further if required, and adding that a prolonged period of time is uh, most likely to pass before the, their objectives are met. Now our view on unchanged year-over-year inflation rate is likely to add more credence to the bank's uh, view and is likely to allow officials to remain ready to cut interest rates uh, further if uh, deemed necessary. We get more CPI data later in the day, this time from the UK. The headline rate is expected to have risen to 0.7% year over year from 0.4%, while the core one is forecast to have ticked up to 1% from 0.9%. At the prior Bank of England gathering, policymakers kept their monetary policy settings unchanged and noted that the recent plans for easing of COVID-related restrictions may be consistent uh, with a slightly stronger outlook for, so, for uh, consumption growth. However, they repeated uh, that uh, the outlook for the economy remains unusually uncertain and that if the inflation outlook weakens, they stand ready to take the necessary action. Thus, with both the headline and the core CPI rates well below the bank's objective of, objective of 2%, we don't believe that officials will alter their stance anytime soon. Now on Thursday, the central bank torch will be passed to the ECB. At its uh, last meeting, this bank decided to accelerate its uh, pandemic emergency purchase program in order to stop any unwarranted rise in bond yields. Although other major central banks share the view that the latest rise in bond yields around the globe uh, just represents a healthy economic recovery, that's not the case for the ECB. Rising bond yields in Europe have partly sp spilled over from the, from the U.S. markets, reacting to President Biden's massive fiscal stimulus. That said, PMIs since then suggested that the euro area economy is on a recovery mode while inflation rose. Although several Eurozone nations are still in lockdowns, and despite ECB President Lagarde noting that any rise in inflation is likely to be temporary, the minutes of the last meeting revealed that officials discussed the idea of reducing the pace of, uh, of purchases in, uh, in the future. Thus, it would be interesting to see whether they will signal something like that at this meeting or whether they will stand ready or, or, or whether they will stay ready to ease uh, further if deemed necessary. The government, uh, with government bond yields around the globe pulling back recently, we would see the former case as uh, the more likely one. And if indeed this is the case, the euro is likely to continue strengthening. 
Now, as for the data, the only, the only worth uh, mentioning is the U.S. existing home sales for March, which are expected to have rebounded 0.9% month over month after slumping 6.6% uh, in February. Now, finally, on Friday, during the Asian session, Japan's, na Japan's national CPIs for March are coming out. No forecast available for the headline rate, but the core one is expected to have risen to minus zero minus 0.1 percent year over year from minus from minus 0.4 percent during the early european morning the uk retail sales for march are due to be released both the headline and core sales are forecast to have slowed to 1.5 percent month over month at 1.3 percent uh, month over month from 2.1 and 2.4 percent respectively Following the latest uh, safety concerns with regards to the AstraZeneca coronavirus vaccine, which uh, may have slowed the rollout in the UK, slowing retail sales may raise questions with regards to the Bank of England's uh, view that consumption growth is likely to strengthen. This, combined with a potentially subdued inflation on Wednesday and a retreat in the April PMIs, you out later in the day, may allow traders to continue selling the British currency for a while more. Apart from the preliminary UK PMIs, for which no forecast is available, we get the preliminary prints from the Eurozone and the US as well. Eurozone's manufacturing and services indices are expected to have pulled back to 62 and 49 from and 49.1 from 62.5 and 49.6 respectively, something that would uh, take the composite PMI down to 52.8 from 50 from 53.2. The US both the manufacturing and services PMIs are forecast uh, to rise to 60.5 and 61.7 from 51.1 and 60.4, confirming that the world's uh, largest economy is recovering from the damages of the coronavirus pandemic at a faster pace than other uh, nations. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much uh, for watching and listening. I hope you have a great week and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next Monday. If you are interested in more detailed and frequent analysis, you can find me on our YouTube channel from Tuesday to Friday at around 7.30 a.m. GMT. So goodbye and have a nice day. JFT, just fair and direct.